Well, hello and welcome to Modular Curiosity, episode 24. We're back after a vacation of a couple of weeks. Yeah, we got a great big boat. Uh, we've sailed up to Alaska. Turns out they had cocktails on the boat. In Alaska, we went to Juneau. Turns out they had cocktails in Juneau. Then we went to a big glacier. They didn't have cocktails in the glacier, but they did have them on the boat. Then we went to Sitka, saw some totem poles, saw some body, bald eagles. Then we went to uh, see Ketchikan and got rained on. And we went to Victoria, Canada and walked and walked and walked and saw some beautiful stuff. And then we came back to see friends in Seattle and looked at Mount Rainier. And uh, it was pretty amazing. It was nice to be out, but hey, it's great to be back. And guess what? When I got back, there were all kinds of new plugins to update. And I started playing with this one from Hora, the Twin Quartet LFO. I'm doing all the voices, all the rhythms, all the drum beats, everything off of LFOs right now. How cool. Let me show you what I got. All right. Okay, here I have a scope set up and we're looking at the output of our LFO and this is pretty much exactly what we'd expect. We simply have an LFO, we can change the waveform. Uh, yep, there we go to a triangle. We can go to a, uh, a ramp, a sawtooth. We can go to pulse wave. And we can change the speed. Okay, Greg, well that sounds like every other LFO that we have. Or is it? Because we have four outputs. Check this out. I'm going to slow this down a little bit to make the waveform bigger. And notice this 90 degree offset. Well, I'm going to put the second output here. And what's happening is that the second output is offset by 90 degrees. Now think, if instead of thinking of a sine wave, think of this as a clock as the hand moving around here. And all you're talking about is the Y dimension of the clock. When it's up at 12 o'clock, it's high. When it comes down to three o'clock, it's right about there. When it comes down to six o'clock, it's here. And I'm talking about the blue line right now. Comes back around to nine o'clock, it's here. Comes back up to 12 o'clock, it's back there. So this is like 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, back to 12 o'clock. So what if we were 90 degrees out? Well, that would mean when this was at three, this would be at 12 and sure enough it is well guess what what if we put a second scope directly underneath it and look at the other two and i wish we had a scope where i could overlay four tracks but you could see you would be able to see that well let's do it this way if i put this one here it should be 180 degrees out. Yes, yeah, see, as this is high, that one is low. That's 180 degrees out. And if I put it over here, it should be 270 degrees out. It should peak about there. Yep, and it does. What this means is we have LFOs that we can offset from each other. So let's go back to zero and 90 degrees. And watch what happens. As I turn this, they will get closer and as I turn it further away it will get further apart it'll get closer to that 90 degree now we have a second one here so if I say I'm going to slave the second guy the second side to the first side at one to one we're going to have essentially the same the same rate but what if I say no I want it to be twice as long oh, I'm sorry twice as fast <laughs> times two notice over here we have two waveforms for every one of these twice as long would be half speed so now we're gonna make this half as fast as that I can go really low to one eighth of the speed to very fast I can go exactly one eight, eight times and this, of course, can be voltage controlled. But guess what? This side can also have an offset, a different offset than this. Okay, what is this going to sound like? Well, let's throw a 
maybe about, I'm going to guess, say, four oscillators into this and see what happens. Okay, so what I've set up is the four outputs, each going through an attenuverter so I could uh, basically decrease the volume of the waveform. Because remember, if with LFOs, if we put the entire signal through, it goes from way too high to way too low. So we have to turn the volume down to get the range that we want. So I'm just running each one of these through an attenuverter. And the first one goes to this oscillator. And I have only that turned on. I'm going to turn the second one. That's going to be the second waveform. And now if I change the degrees and bring them closer together, you can see that those waveforms are getting closer together. If we bring them very close, we can get almost a chorus sound, I bet. Yeah, we're getting some weird phase cancellation there. But I have four of them, so if I turn the third one on, it will now be, this is 90 degrees, this will be 180 degrees out of phase. And here's 270. Now at this point you might be thinking, well, okay, that's kind of cool. Not really sure where I would use that. Well, what if we did, say, um, this oscillator on the secondary one? And we're gonna make it half, half the speed. Or at twice the speed. See, now we're starting to get some really interesting rhythmic patterns. And speaking of rhythmic patterns, we have different waveforms, including square waves. So now let's think about this. What if I use the left side of this as a bunch of triggers, as a square wave, and I had the right side be a waveform? What could I do with that? Well, let's pass it to something like, uh, say, the resonator. That would be rings. Okay, so here I have a pulse wave. I have the pulse wave triggering the strum of resonator. There we go. And I have four of them set up. And let's do slightly different sounds for each one. And just for the heck of it, I'm gonna put a drum on this first one so we can really hear the downbeat. There we go. Now watch what happens if I start playing with the offset. Because right now we're having basically one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But if I play with the offset, that's gonna change. So I can get some interesting rhythms. Now, since I have that rhythm going, and I have another LFO, which I could slave to the same sync as the first one, what if I was to take, say, that, and go to, let's say, the structure? And this one go to the structure of, say, this one. And 
maybe I'll play with the, uh, the damping of this one. And let's say, let's slow it way down. And perhaps the brightness of the fourth one. Now we're getting some interesting stuff going on. But wait, what if, what if I move all this over and get one more of these quad LFOs in here? Now you remember from the last episode, we did some interesting things with LFOs and quantizers. What if we were to run another LFO a dual LFO with, say, a sample and hold and quantizer on each channel, changing the pitch. So now we're going to have pseudo-random pitch changes based on this LFO. Let's set that up. Okay, so I've now set each of these to the same pitch, all with a C. I'm going to start I'm going to start adding pitches. And if we start playing with, say, the uh, how many notes can ring at once, say set it to yellow, which is two, or maybe change the voicing to, say, our sympathetic strings. Wow, we're not exactly sure what we're gonna get out of this. Let me show you one I set up earlier. Well, here I did essentially the same thing. I used uh, a square wave to trigger my resonators. I have, let's see, voltage per octave, being set from uh, one, but without the quantizer. Over here, I have it going to different things like position, or let's see, this is, yeah, pos position, structure, and so on. And I've got a couple of these running into, the, into clouds, the texture synthesizer. So just for fun, I could always hit it with a little more blend. Maybe play with its pitch. And that, huh, that is a very, very strange LFO. This is from Hora, the twin quartet LFO. Quick review, two sides, four outputs on each side. The sides can be offset. So I can completely change the rhythm just by changing the offset. I can make the right side multiples or fractions of the left side. I can change the sound of the resonator, of course, to completely change the sound of the patch. Yeah. 
and everything sounds better with clouds. Wow, that is a cool little module. Okay, so that's it for this episode. The Hora Twin Quartet, LFO. Have fun with that one. There's all kinds of cool stuff to do with this guy. All right, as always, stay curious. We'll see you next time on Modular Curiosity.